Well, the thing is, right, so if she just follows you around, that's just a telltale sign we need to work around more distractions, mm -hmm. right? So obviously right here, you know, she's not distracted. She's been here enough times where the distractions aren't that hard. You know, maybe at home in the backyard is a little bit more distracting for her, right. or maybe at the park around the corner is more distracting. You know what I mean? You want to go somewhere where she's not going to be as focused on you and work on it in that environment. Right. So. so what about having, like, um, are the dogs in the backyard? That's yeah, a of course. That's a real life situation, yeah. right? right? So yeah, if the other dogs out there, if she's going to be busy romping and playing and stuff and doesn't focus in very nicely, that would be a great place to practice it. Such a little weirdo. <laughs> so uh, this is like gonna be times ten later today. Like, what do I do? What's that? Like, there's so many people there, so excited. To oh, I understand. That yeah, yeah. Is, is, like, it's probably <clears throat> worse. Yeah. So. Let me ask you this first and foremost. What are your rules with like jumping and stuff? Do you like when he does it? Do you not like when he does it? Do you care? I don't care. You don't really care. I don't. Okay. <laughs> so here's the thing. Most of this stuff is is up to you as far as what you expect out of him. Okay. You know, I'm not here to be like you have to make him do this or this or this or this or anything like that, right? Um, that being said, we want to make sure when he's in a state of arousal that we can still control him if we need to, right? That's really the key with all of this kind of stuff. Um, so I would recommend, you know, obviously we don't want to reinforce like a ridiculously high state of arousal, obviously, which is why, you know, even right now you're petting him and stuff, but we're keeping it calm. We're not like getting him super overstimulated and stuff. And that's why he's settling down nicely. So I would try to coach your guests to do the same, right? Like first minute or so when they come over, just like breathe for a second. Like, don't be like on the floor rolling around with him, like picking him up, throwing him around, stuff like that, you know? Just like let him get some of those wiggles out of his system and reinforce the state of mind that you want, okay. right? Um, so that's really the only way that I would handle it. <clears throat> um, what were, go ahead and remind me of some of the major issues you were having with him at home again. Um, I think the main issue was probably um, when um, he's around like my niece and my nephew, it's mm -hmm. just like, he tends to bark. Like okay, so like excessive barking with things. That's so funny. Like I don't, I don't think he barked a whole lot while he was here. Yeah, yeah, he was pretty quiet actually. So, um, so, so that's good, obviously, right? Um, and that's an easy one. That's something where we have the ability now to tell him yes and no. I always say, yeah. right? So we could correct him for those types of things. Like if I didn't want that jumping, right? I could stop that very quickly if I needed to. Like he didn't jump on us or anything because we didn't allow it because mm -hmm. those are our rules here, obviously. Um, but um, yeah, as far as the barking and stuff, that's going to be an easy one to stop. Okay. So, yeah. uh, what else did you kind of see out of him? Anything big? Uh, uh, didn't you mention like walking? He was yeah, a little yeah, kind of. Yeah. Like leash like, yeah. walking. Like, um, he tends to just like do his own thing. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, I'm sorry, he's pretty chill. Good. Yeah, he really was a pretty good dog. Like the only the only issues we saw, and I think we talked about this on the phone that one time, is he was really weird about the floors at first. Like particularly like the hardwood floors we have at the other facility, like yeah. upstairs. He did not want to walk on those. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so he got past that pretty quick. He didn't really have an issue with these floors. These floors he was pretty fine with. Um, and then you know just traffic and stuff like that, he'd get a little spooked by sometimes. Um, but he did fine with that. And we did a lot of like Home Depot trips and stuff to get him around like a lot of commotion. Yeah. And he did phenomenal with that as well. Um, so really, yeah, he really was a pretty easy dog all in all. So what we'll do today is we're just gonna kind of get into all the basics of his training. We'll show you kind of the commands and stuff that he learned, show you how you could start implementing those things at home just to create structure and stuff and you know make sure that he doesn't get too out of control or anything like that. <laughs> kind of
kind of go from there. Dash, come here. All right. So like I said, we're just gonna start rolling through stuff here. I'm gonna start with our bed stay. So bed stay simply means for him to get onto a stationary object and stay there until told otherwise. Again, some uses for this that you could have are gonna be obviously guests coming over to keep him out of the way, obviously, so people aren't tripping over him, uh, cooking, eating, you know, any situation where he would be getting like annoying and you need to just get him and just kind of do something else temporarily. So what I'm gonna do is walk him over to this bed. I'll tell him, dash bed. Once he gets into position, I'll drop that leash and have him hold that position for a minute or so. Now, if he were to get up and try to run over to you or something, which is pretty normal, obviously he'll, I'm sure he'll do that at some point here. <laughs> what I would do is I would tell him no, I would give him a correction on the e-collar here, and then I would take him back to the bed. Okay. You know what, I do have a question. Sure. For what reason? To like just like avoid like the, you know like people walking towards us. So what you're saying is, I gotcha. So you're saying if you're walking down the sidewalk and somebody else is coming this way, you'll pick him up as you pass by. Yeah. And do you do that because you think he'll try to go pull over to them, or because they're gonna come over to him? Uh, he's gonna go over. I gotcha, okay. So um, we could stop him from doing that now. So as we've done the walking and stuff, especially, you know, again, going to Home Depot and the park and stuff like that, uh, we've taught him as we're passing people on the walk just to ignore them. Okay. So. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of times, it's not that picking up your dog is bad, right? But in some cases, if you get into a habit of doing it too much to prevent issues, what happens is we never teach them what we want out of them, and we constantly are putting them in this position where they're seeing us as needing to pick them up in order to make them feel secure. And if we don't do that, we'll see a lot of anxiety start to come out of them over time, right? So I always say, <clears throat> with the little guys, we want to treat them like they're big dogs as much as we can, you know? That's like the number one problem. Like when we see people come in with little dogs, the reason why they get so bad at like three years, four years, five years and stuff is because we treat them too much like they're stuffed animals and don't give them a position to learn kind of the rules and expectations, yeah. you know? <clears throat> and luckily again, he's a friendly guy. So he just needed some rules and boundaries, you know? So enforcing those things, you're gonna start to see him get a lot more confident out on those walks because of it. Okay, all right, I'm gonna do two more of those. really that we're not letting him just decide when he wants to no longer do the cub. Yeah. That we're kind of giving him that cue of when he can. And a lot of times, like if I'm gonna walk my dogs, I'll usually structure the walk into like three sections where I start off with the cub command, get him nice and focused in, make sure that he's obviously focused on me. Somewhere in the middle, I'll give him a break, let him sniff around, go to the bathroom, run around if I wanna let him off leash or something. And then what I'll do is I'll end with the cub command again. Try to relax your arm there. There you go. <clears throat> but we wanna kinda of see where he winds up. So if he's kinda of crossing over like that, mm -hmm. what you could do is you could either let him go to your right side, or if he's getting really bad with it, you would tell him no and correct for it. Really the key is we wanna make sure we're not maintaining constant tension on that leash. We wanna see him walking with us. Yeah, right. <laughs> We'll make it right here. Yeah, a lot of this stuff is more just like developing new muscle memory for us than anything. Okay, um, back to the running. Sometimes we sure. like to run on our walk. It's fine. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, give it a go. Show me uh, what you normally would do. <laughs> like, 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 in the, like we end up like, like, you know, on our way back home. With 
Oh, I got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's fine. Yeah, he's like not in the bubble, but it's like, it's hard because you need like that sure. structure, I guess. Or you yeah, you know, again, all of these things are your rules as far as how much you enforce this yeah. stuff, right? I'm showing you basically throughout the course of this, all of the things he's capable of doing, right? Like he can hold these sit stays, hold these bed stays, do these common commands, walk this way on a leash. From there, you implement it where you need to. You know what I mean? Especially like, like you said, like your biggest issue you were having with him was just that he barked at your guests when they came over, yeah. right? That's a, that is so easy to stop, right? But now you have these tools at your disposal where if you start running into any sort of problems with him, you're in a position where you could reel them back in, right? If he starts getting too pushy on the walk, you could utilize that come yeah. command, right? If he is getting distracted by squirrels and stuff, right? You could use your come command to get him to focus back in, et cetera, et cetera, right? And the biggest thing is, even though it's your rules to decide what you want him to do and when you want him to do it, we want to make sure we maintain some sort of degree of structure. You know what I mean? That may mean, right, that on your walks, you do, let's say you're going for a 25 minute walk with him. The first five minutes of the walk, you work that come command, and then for the next 15 minutes, you let him do whatever the hell he wants to. I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I don't care as long as there's not problems with it, right? But we want to make sure in any of these settings we're going into with him that we can get him under control if we need to. That's really the key with all of this. Okay. So, all right, let's, uh, let's keep cruising this way. Come back. <laughs> That's the cool thing about training is it's kind of like you implement it how you want to implement it, you know? Yeah. Very good. Then you can do a couple of those. Okay. Right now the collar should be on him a lot of the time when you're out with him for the first week. Okay. Right? First week, I want you just kind of getting into a habit of just working a little bit here and there with him, setting some boundaries where you need to. You know, if he's doing a lot of excessive barking and stuff, we want to be in a position to correct for it every time that he does it, obviously. Past that first week, you're going to find places that you need it, places that you don't need it. You know, for me, what I've found to be good long term with my dogs is I put it on if I have guests come over the house, I put it on if we go off leash anywhere, and I put it on if we go into like a public setting. Okay. And those are the three scenarios where if my dogs are gonna blow me off, they're gonna blow me off in one of those three settings. But outside of that, just hanging out in the house and stuff like that, they obviously don't need it. Okay. Um, as far as homework and stuff to work on, for the first week, there's three things that I like people to do with their dogs every day. So thing number one is just a structured walk. So like focus on your healing, the come command obviously. And it can be as long or as short as you want. You know, if you wanna take them out for five minutes to do it, or if you wanna take them for a really long walk, okay. Totally fine, no problem with that, obviously. You can work some sit stays on the walk, you can work some come commands out on the walk, however you want to do it. Uh, thing number two is I like for everybody to work on some sort of just active session where you take five, 10 minutes in the house and you work on a little bit of everything. So kind of like what we did in here, we'll work some bed stays, work some sit stays, work some come commands, things like that. <clears throat> The third thing is like a long bed stay once a day, right? So you could do 10 minutes, 15 minutes where you put them on that bed and you have them maintain that position the entire time, okay. right? Uh, those are just to get them in the groove, make sure that you're good with working them and stuff. From there, like I said, as far as how much you use this, where you use it, when you use it, that's totally up to you. Is he pretty reactive? What I would say is immediately moving forward and this may sound like overkill, but I promise it's not, considering exactly what happened with the delivery driver, right? Like, we, we definitely want to take it very seriously. I would have his e-collar on anytime you're home with him and supervising, and it's all the way at 100. All the way up, and any reactivity out, out, out of the house, whether it's at the door, the windows, whatever, it doesn't matter what it's for, you make sure you give that correction very consistently every time. And as long, be, it, in every single time that he reacts, if as long as you're giving that same correction at that very high level, you should see a drastic improvement. Typically what happens is if you're doing lower levels, like 30 and, and kind of playing around with it a little bit, Dogs like Mal because though I haven't interacted with you personally, I have interacted with him a number of times when he's been at our facility. Um, it's easy to kind of like fuel the fire if you're too low. So instead of like shutting down his reactivity with a nice high level, if you're too low, you almost tend to like agitate and just kind of nag them <laughs> a little bit more. Yeah, it just kind of almost pisses them off more than anything. So instead of doing that, have it automatically at 100. And so even if it's just a singular bark 
or if it's a full explosive reactivity, it's all getting corrected at 100. Okay. Yeah. Um, and let's do that, and let's kind of start just with that simply and see if we can make progress that way. And of course, you know, making moving forward, making sure that um, those doors are both closed and secure, so that way we don't have any oopsies that way. And then I'll have our, um, our facility manager reach out and kind of set up a time for you to bring him in for like a private session. And we can just kind of touch on all these things, see how he's doing since we started implementing the corrections for that, and then be able to kind of... Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. So that way everyone is following the same structure and everything like that. Exactly. Um, okay, perfect. Well, I'll have um, Kayla reach out to you and we'll get a time set up for, for us to meet. And in the meantime, um, just do what we talked about with the corrections. And obviously, we'll see him tomorrow. So we'll kind of see how he's doing and everything, too. Jerry. Hello. <laughs> You had quite a lot to say, and now you're like, actually, just hold me, please. Which that's likely probably what a lot of your reactivity is. I'd say that's like, what, 95% of reactivity is, is just like fear. So they act like big, bad, and scary, because at first they're just not really sure. And then once they finally warm up and get used to you, then it kind of dies down a little bit. But what we're gonna do through the training is just kind of give him better options at the start of how to deal with being uncomfortable and also build his confidence level with it as well. So what we're gonna do initially with the collar is get him to learn how to yield to like pressure and release. So basically, my goal here is that I just want him following me around and staying with me. So anytime he starts to wander off or not follow me, I'm just applying pressure to that collar. And as soon as he yields to that and comes to me, that pressure gets released. Okay. Good job, buddy. Good boys, good boys. All right. A little bit of pressure, and once he yields, that pressure will go away. There we go. So effectively, he's learning how to turn that pressure off. So pressure and release. Good boy. Now that we're, I'm gonna start shaping our sit position a little bit. So. I'm not actually gonna use a command or a say sit or anything really. I'm just using my leash pressure to get him in that position. And the reason why I'm doing that is because even if he knew it verbally to a certain extent, if we were ever in a position where we told him to do it and he didn't listen, we need to have a way to reinforce it physically to make sure that we can still hold him accountable for it. So I'm gonna pull straight up, so kind of like a vertical here. And as soon as his butt hits the ground, I'm gonna release that pressure. And again, I need that pressure to stay consistent because, good, I want him to learn that sitting is the way to turn it off. Okay? Good job. Come here. Oh, good job, good job. Come here. Oh, good boy. All right, so I'm gonna have you jump in here. What I'm gonna have you do first to start out is just the walking exercise. So I'm basically gonna have you go back and forth in just a straight line, um, just to see how he does with that and give you kind of some parameters to work with. So your goal is that you're gonna keep him on your left side. If he gets to where like his butt is in front of your hip about this position, you're just gonna give kind of like a horizontal tug backwards to get him to fall back a little bit. If he pulls out to the left, you'll just do a little tug to get him back over. And if he cuts you off, then you'll just do a tug sideways to keep him on your left side. 
Sound good? There you go. <laughs> and if he does that where he refuses to walk, then you're just gonna use your momentum and just keep going. Yep. There you go. There you go. And go ahead and turn and come back this way. Very nice. And that's perfect. So how there's no tension on the leash when he's where he should be at your side. If he starts to get out of position, that's when you'll add that leash pressure. Good, go ahead and turn. You can walk back that way again. That's great. I know, buddy, you're getting all the weird noises today. <laughs> Perfect, that was really good. And so there you see how you kind of had like, like pressure, but not like a lot of pressure on it. So the trick with this is either we want none or we want a very intentional tug. Okay. So in that situation, he was kind of where he is now. So I would say that he wasn't really what I would consider out of position yet. So I would just give him a little bit more leash to see is he gonna continue going and then I'm gonna deliberately pull him back. Okay. Or is he just gonna stay where he is and that's totally fine. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, go ahead and keep walking and we'll try that too. There you go, perfect. How does it feel so far? Is it making sense? Yeah, yeah okay. it makes sense. I just have to remember to do my part of it. You're right. <laughs> exactly. The big key is that we want to avoid like subtle nagging and we either want it to be like where you are is fine or where you are is not fine yeah. and I'm going to fix it, you know? That's great. When just generally walking without any distractions, was he kind of a puller to begin with or? 100%. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So this is a nice improvement, I like that. And this week when you're practicing with him, by no means is this gonna be like perfect, you know, right off the bat. Um, it's just gonna keep getting better week after week, but this is like the bare bones foundation of it, you know, to get it started. I think this is important uh, for a lot of reasons, but I mean, we have three dogs and mm -hmm. if the gate opens up, the other two, yeah. Just like meander because they're old sure. and small, <laughs> um, and the little one's scared. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I, that's what I concern. About yeah. Her. We used to have a husky that would run. Now, one thing you could do is you could practice like gate drills where you teach her to respect that threshold. So let's say this were the gate right here, right? Uh -huh. And it were closed and she has this bad habit of when it opens, she goes flying out of it, right? You could take your e-collar, turn it up relatively high, right? Walk up to the gate, open it, and if she goes through, just correct her for it, yeah. right? And then bring her back on the other side and repeat that until you could open it and she doesn't go through. Then you could even get crazy with it and open it she doesn't go through, then you go through the gate, and same deal, if she tried to follow you through it, correct and get her back on the other side. So essentially what you're doing is you're creating like an invisible fence right. at the gate. So that door is not the only thing that's holding her right. in, right? right? And that'll train her for those emergency situations where it's like somebody left the gate open or whatever, you know? I mean, she doesn't do it all the time. She's, sometimes sure. we'll have to bring the garbage cans in and then I'll show away. Yep. But, I, but this is something that uh, helps for those, like you said, those emergencies. 100%. Your turn? Yep. But if all my kid walk away from her either. <laughs> well, I mean, I can work on that stuff and then we can... Um, well, the thing is, right, so if she just follows you around, that's just a telltale sign we need to work around more distractions, mm -hmm. right? So obviously right here, you know, she's not distracted. She's been here enough times where the distractions aren't that hard. You know, maybe at home in the backyard is a little bit more distracting for her, or maybe at the park around the corner is more distracting. You know what I mean? You want to go somewhere where she's not going to be as focused on you and work on it in that environment. Right. So, so what about having, like, um, 
are the dogs in the backyard? That's yeah, a distraction. of course. That's a real life situation, yeah. right? right? So yeah, if the other dog's out there, if she's going to be busy romping and playing and stuff and doesn't focus in very nicely, that would be a great place to practice it. Yeah, I try to start looking at, like, obviously you guys wanted to work on the come command because there's somewhere that you're having issues with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whether that's coming in the backyard or with the dogs or whatever. So start working on it in that context. In that context. You know, wherever okay. the problem is, train it there. Yeah. Okay. All right, why don't you go ahead and put a regular leash back on there? Awesome. She looks great. She did way better than she did last time. Yeah, she did. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, obviously any, anything like that, reactivity and stuff, we would just correct for. So, um, okay, so a couple things to work on here, right? So the sit stays look great th today, right? We finally got somewhere with that. Uh, like I said, I, I don't care if you guys do a ton of those or not. I just wanted to make sure we could do them if we needed to, okay. right? So we checked that box. We're good to go on those. Uh, the come command, she picked up just fine. She had a little bit of an issue with doing it with me, but with you guys, it was perfectly fine. And that's all that I really care about, yeah. right? So um, you could work on this two ways, right? You could work on it off leash if you're in a contained area, right? So have her loose, right? Give that come command. If she doesn't do it, tell her no. Give your correction, give your come command. And work on it like we were talking about in the context where you're having the problem with it, right? That way you're actually solving the issue uh, that you're having, right? Uh, the other context you can work on it is if you go in an uncontained area, like a busy park or something like that, but use some sort of long line if you're going to do it. So pick up one of these from somewhere. It's like a 20-foot line. Okay. Um, that way you can kind of practice it in those areas safely. Okay. Right? Okay. And if you guys work on that for a couple of weeks here, um, you know, let me know how it's going. Okay. And then if we need to do a little bit more with her, we will. Okay. So. Yeah, I'd like to get her so she could walk around in the front yard. Sure. And stick around close yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So same deal, right? I've never had a dog that would do that. So that would be a great example of somewhere you would use the long line to practice it okay. in, right? Get a long line, take her out in the front yard, and start hanging. You know, if that's something you want to do, start simulating it. You know what I mean? And then what you'll find is after you do that for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, something like that, you'll notice, is there somewhere where I'm really having a hard time with getting her focused in? Like whether it's the neighbor walking by or mm -hmm. cars going by or whatever it may be, right? Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then we come up with a plan for, okay, well, why isn't she doing well in that situation? Maybe we need to correct her a little bit more firmly for it, or maybe we're not practicing it well enough or something like that. And then we work through the problem from there. But you gotta be able to start putting her in that situation in a safe way where you could see how she's gonna to do right. you know because it's the dogs walking by or something yeah like yeah no different than what we saw there a second yeah. ago you know she got a little worked up oh there's a dog there right <laughs> yeah. so same deal just like we did now a minute ago right you'd be in a position to start correcting her for that Great. right and set it up and get it under control and then there's no reason why you couldn't just hang out with out front okay. with her so but work on it for a couple weeks Alrighty. give me an update and then we'll kind of go from there with this right. but i think she did really good today good.